All right, welcome back to the YouTube classroom. This is Autodesk 3ds Max 2018. Today, we are going to talk about the coordinate systems that we're gonna use when we're building and animating in 3D Studio Max. Today, we're gonna to just start out with a cube as usual, but we'll delete that and use something that has a little more direction. So I'm gonna hit T for top, make sure my little hotkeys are on. Um, and then I'm going to make a uh, teapot. So in the teapot, let's hit S for snap grab it in the center and move it over. All right, cool. So now I've got a teapot and you should too. So first things first, we have our different tools. We have our move or move tool, right? Using uh, W, E is our rotation and R is our scale. Now, each one of these builds and works along a coordinate system and the coordinate system can be found up here. Currently, we are using the view coordinate system. If I hit front, the view coordinate system shows that Y is up and X is to the right. If I hit left, Y is up and X is still to the right, even though we're in a different place. That's because these coordinates are related to the viewport rather than the like world, okay? There are other options. The view uh, option is the default. If you click on this arrow, for a pull down menu, you can select world. World is consistent. So if I hit front view, Z is up, X is to the right, positive X, of course. If I hit left, Z is up, and now X is pointing towards, away from me, actually, pointing away from me. But you can see how this is very consistent. If I change it back to view, all right, it doesn't change, but if I hit left, you see I have Y up, and X to the right. If I hold Alt, middle mouse button and rotate, you can see when I let go, it snaps to world. So when you're in the perspective view, or if you're in any sort of view that's not a orthographic left, front, or top view, then you're going to get the world coordinates. Okay, that's, that's the default setting. World, the world coordinates are always shown down here. There's a tiny little cursor that rotates with the world that you can see. Those are your consistent world coordinates and they should always be down there. I'm gonna hit Shift F to get rid of the little safe view, safe thing. Um, so that is cool. Now, the other thing that's cool is notice if I had world, this is when I'm using the, um, the select and move tool. But if I hit E, you'll notice it swaps back to view. That's because the view uh, the coordinate system is tied to the tool that you're using. So since I'm using the rotation tool, it goes back to view, which is the default. If I change this to world, and then I hit W, it'll stay as world when I come back. See, when I swap back and forth, this stays the same. If I hit W, change this to local, and hit uh, E, switch to rotation, you can see world stays the same. So these coordinate systems are attached to each individual tool. This is actually really, really helpful because we are going to jump back and forth between world and local a lot. Um, local is great because it keeps track of where the object is, is uh, in relation to its original rotation. So when it comes to rotations from the left front view, um, we have the rotation system like this, right? So if I rotate this, you'll notice that the rotation gizmo stays aligned to the position that the object is in rather than the world. If I change local to world, then my gizmo resets so that it is set uh, with a perfect crosshair. There's no rotation, there's no angular uh, change. So if I rotate this again, you see that the gizmo stays the same, or if I go back to local, it's rotated, and the gizmo shows the rotation of the object as to how far it's actually been rotated off of its main axis. So that's really interesting and a very powerful tool because, for instance, if I wanted this uh, teapot um, to rotate on, let's go back to world here. If I wanted the teapot to rotate and then hit W and I wanted it uh, world. If I wanted it to fly off this way, in order to make sure that I'm flying off perfectly, 
without snapping, I have to sort of guess as to where it would be. Whereas if I did it using local rotation, up for the teapot is still this way. So the rotation and even the positional reference coordinates of the object between these three things are really, really important. Now, we talked a lot about world and local, um, and those are the most important that we're going to use, but there's also a few more that we should cover. Um, one that you can also use, and I almost always use it for um, rotation, is called screen. Screen actually changes the rotator based on wherever the camera is. So it's always pointed directly at the camera. So if you have something that's kind of on an angle, for instance, let's move this back to local. Let's say I rotated something a weird angle. Like I rotate it like that. Okay, if I go left, if I go left, if I go top, I don't have a really good view of this. But if I can line it up sort of like this, then I can go into screen and I can rotate it sort of around its own axis. It's not perfect because it's not a perfect system, but it's pretty cool. Um, you have a lot of power over that. Um, so that's kind of cool. I'm going to undo all that. So that's screen where everything rotates and moves based on where your camera is. Um, we talked about world. Parent is important too. Parent is actually uh, a system where the object that you're rotating will use the coordinate system of the object that it is a child of. So I want to make a box just to have a reference. Um, and the, the box is going to be the parent. So I'm going to link, select and link this parent to the child. All right, cool. So this is the child of the parent. So it's the child to the parent, sorry. Um, anyway, if I use, uh, if I hit E for rotation, it's on screen right now, which is weird. And I use parent and I rotate it. It should use the position of rotation based on the parent. There we go. See, it is moving around the parent. This could be really great if you're doing like a, I don't know, orbiting something orbiting around the sun or whatever. Because now whenever I take this, um, Okay, so there, that's, there we go. Cool. So that's, that's basically how that works. You're going to have a specific object, and then you can use, um, when, whenever you're dealing with two objects, we'll talk about this pivot point setup here in a second. But the pivot point setup basically looks at what, pivot point it's going to use when you have more than one object selected. So if I have two objects selected and I come up here and use selection center and I change it back to view or world, either one would work, um, and I move it, it moves from the selection midpoint of the objects that I have. So if I have a third object over here and I select them, oops, if I, and I select them all and I try and rotate them, they all move from the center point of the three objects. So this changes based on where the objects are. So if I take this and move it around here, it should be here-ish when I highlight them all, hit E. So this is between the three of them where their center point is. Um, so that is the center selection center. Um, this is pivot point center. So if you select multiple objects, they're going to uh, move around their specific pivot point. And then we have, uh, which one is this one? Transform coordinate center. So that means wherever the center of the objects are, like the center of the transform coordinates, which in this case is zero, zero, zero. That's really important if you're doing something for the game uh, and you're using zero, zero, zero as your center point. Okay, so those are your three main coordinate reference systems that we're gonna use. Um, well, I guess I went through more than that. There are others uh, that are valuable, like uh, the working pivot. Working pivot set up through here, um, where you can edit your working pivot and adjust it. Um, you can set it to a new section. You can place the pivot to view, and you can move it around. Um, and that's really important for when you have something where you want everybody to 
keep their original pivots or if you have something, some sort of odd pivot section and you want to make sure that all of the pieces retain their original pivot but you work with a separate one. Um, so that's pretty powerful too. And then local aligned I'm not sure of because I never use and gimbal I'm also not familiar with. So we don't use them and maybe they're great. And if you know about them, leave something in the comments. So yeah, that's it. Uh, thanks for watching. We are going to see you next time when we start building bones. <laughs>